offered prayers of comfort and support. We want you to know that we felt them. And they have sustained us. Now at four, a community coming together today after an unthinkable tragedy in their small town just last week. Family and friends of Tasha Haight, her five children, and her mother, Gail Earl, are remembering the family after they were killed in a murder-suicide. Thanks for being with us. I'm Jamie McGriff. And I'm Brian Schnee. Our very own Jim Spiewak is anchoring for us this afternoon. And Enoch joins us live now. Jim? So Brian and Jamie, this is uh, we're at the site of where the vigil is going to be taking place starting at 6 o'clock tonight. It's a civic community center here. There's an open field. Let's go ahead and just set the scene for you right now as they are beginning to set up. Again, this is still a couple hours away. So the tents just went up not too long ago, just a few minutes ago. There are some community organizers and event organizers here that are helping set up. I am being told that there's going to be a few speakers here. There's not going to be an open microphone tonight. Um, so we're not going to hear from uh, a bunch of members of the community, but we are going to hear from some speakers. Event organizers are not really sure at this point exactly how many people are going to show up. They say, listen, if there's 10 or if there's five, six or 700, there is going to be at least a space for people to come out and breathe and mourn in their own ways as you continue to see them setting up tents. Now, you may remember it was last Thursday that 42-year-old Michael Haight shot and killed his wife, her mother, and the couple's five children before turning the gun on himself. That, according to police. The Enoch City manager said that Tasha Haight did not arrive at an appointment on Wednesday, and that's when the person she was supposed to meet with contacted police. According to court documents, Tasha Haight had filed a divorce petition on December 21st, which was apparently the reason her mother was staying at the home. Now, as you can imagine, it was a very, very emotional day, but the community really came together and to support one another a little bit earlier. We do want to go live now over to Daniel Woodruff. He's joining us from the cemetery where the family was laid to rest not too long ago. Daniel. Yeah, Jim, here in the Leverkin City Cemetery, right behind me, Tasha Haight, her five children, and her mother were all laid to rest this morning. This followed a touching, emotional funeral service. I had the chance to attend that. It went about an hour and a half. During that service, we heard eulogies about Tasha, described as a wonderful mother who sacrificed everything for her children. Her mother, Gail, remembered as strongly devoted to her family, who loved to bake hot, fresh bread for them each week. Each child of Tasha's was also remembered today. 17-year-old Macy Haight, 12-year-old Briley, 7-year-old twins Ammon and Sienna, and the youngest child, 4-year-old Gavin. The Enoch City manager spoke with us today about what the funeral meant as loved ones and the community try to move forward. It is a, a healing moment to a certain extent. Um, it is a, a, a moment of, of love and care, but that ripples out into the communities. It ripples out as long as we remember the, the good things, um, the things that brought joy to the lives of the families and to the friends and neighbors. Really a sense of positivity and optimism here today, even amid the tragedy with the family, of the Earls and the Hates, as well as others who attended the funeral today. If you'd like to read more, I did post a full story about the funeral at KUTV.com. And coming up on 2 News at 5, hear how each of the Hate children was remembered today at the services. It goes without saying this incident has the community of Enoch both stunned and devastated. Fox 13 News reporter Chris Arnold continues our coverage after speaking with neighbors and Hate family friends. A community in mourning. Nearby neighbors like Brianna Baugh left in shock. It's just mind blowing. It's just you don't you don't hear about things like that. And then for it to happen in this little community, it's it's taking a toll on everybody. Tasha is just the heart and soul of that family. Tina Brown has known the hates for more than 20 years, developing a close relationship with Tasha, the wife to Michael, and mother of their five children. We shared a lot um, over the years, and we, we really had that, I, I almost want to call it an unbreakable bond. Brown says she had just recently spoken to Tasha on the phone. Two days ago, three days ago. 
which made hearing the news that the hates and Tasha's mother, Gail, were found dead that much harder to hear. I'm going to explain to you. City officials telling Fox 13 News today they believe all of them were killed inside the family's home Wednesday by Michael before he ultimately killed himself. It was a killing of, almost like, you know, I lost for words. I guess that's the only way that I can explain it. Just thinking like, can, you, can we have done something? So yesterday, yeah. city officials gathering at Enoch City Hall Thursday afternoon. Now, um... Also getting emotional when talking about a family they say they not just knew, but also loved. Um, it's not too often something like this hits pretty close to home. Uh, in fact, the hates were my neighbors, the youngest children played in my yard. For this tight-knit community of about 7,500 people, they are left trying to figure out how to deal with such a tragedy. It's almost like we, we grew up so sheltered in these small southern Utah communities that we don't see a lot of this and sure our kids hear about it on the news a lot of heartache a lot of a lot of questions a lot of emotional don't don't really know how to take it this something like this has never happened here before as well as beginning the healing process i know that everybody will everybody will come together and help each other get through it well as the investigation continues many people i've spoken with both last night and today continue to ask why. Why did this incident even have to happen? And it's something the city manager even touched on during the press conference today, saying it's something they may never get the answer to. Here in Enoch, Chris Arnold, Fox 13 News, Utah. A huge outpouring of sympathy as more than 800 people paid their respects to seven members of an Enoch family who were victims of an apparent murder-suicide last week. Fox 13 News reporter Chris Arnold attended the emotional service at the Leverkin Stake Center of the Church of Jesus Christ of oh. Latter-day Saints. There have been so many involved in this process of recovery. Seven hearses line the parking lot of the Leverkin Stake Center of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There's a story of two families hurt and broken through an unthinkable tragedy. An emotional day as Tasha Haight, her mother Gail Earl, and Tasha's five children, ages 4 to 17 years old, were all laid to rest. This comes after police say Tasha's husband and father to her children, Michael, shot and killed them last week before ultimately turning the gun on himself. The chaos within each of us wants to see the struggle and contention between rival families with grateful hearts. We are delighted to confirm that that is not the case here. This is Brett Earl, Gail's third child and Tasha's brother, holding back tears. And in all who offered prayers of comfort and support. We want you to know that we felt them, and they have sustained us and supported us. While Fox 13 News was able to attend the service this morning, our cameras were not allowed inside. Several members of the Earl family spoke about their most fond memories of their loved ones. Candace Earl Booth, Tasha's sister, said the greatest joy in her mother Gail's life was her family, and that she left a mark on so many lives with her kindness. Booth went on to say her sister was always thinking of and serving others around her. She says 17-year-old Macy, the oldest of the hate children, was truly a blessing to many people. Stacia Earl Westbrook described her niece, 12-year-old Briley, affectionately as her bookworm. And then there was 7-year-old Sienna, who Booth said had an infectious smile and blue eyes that would pierce your soul when she looked at you. Booth said Sienna's twin brother, Ammon, loved his Legos, his friends, and his family. And then there was the youngest, four-year-old Gavin, who Westbrook tearfully said how much she will miss his football tackling hugs. It's hard to describe the feelings that the community has had. Enix City Manager Rob Dotson, as well as the Earl family, described the emotional service as a moment of healing. We put band-aids on. Uh, we do things that help the, the pain and the wounds to, to heal. And that's what this is. This is the greatest action that will make the greatest difference from this catalyst of this event. Well, in speaking with us earlier today, Earl also wanted to thank the Robin and Brenda Haight family, saying that this incident has also left them with a profound heartbreak, just like it has with his family. Now, he also went on to thank all of the law enforcement, first responders, and city officials who he said had the difficult process of helping with this tragic event. Here in Leverkin, Chris Arnold, Fox 13 News, Utah.
we continue to follow the murder suicide that left three adults and five children dead. Their bodies were found inside an Enoch home yesterday afternoon, and that's where we find Fox 13 News reporter Jenna Bree tonight. She joins us live. Jenna, what can you tell us about this investigation so far? Bob and Kelly, police believe a man shot and killed his seven family members before taking his own life at this home on the 4900 North Block of Albert Drive. There's no timeline on when the family was killed, but the Enoch City Mayor says witnesses saw members of the family at a church activity on Tuesday night. The three adults were identified as Michael and Tasha Haight, Tasha's mother, Gail Earl, and five children who were not identified by name, but range in ages from four to six. 17 years old. After being married for nearly 20 years, court records show 40-year-old Tasha Haight filed for divorce on December 21st in Iron County. In a briefing today, Enix City Manager Rob Dotson said authorities received a call Wednesday that Tasha had missed a previously scheduled appointment, and that's why police made the welfare check yesterday afternoon. A few hours after that welfare check call came in and, and Tasha was not located, a missing persons report was um, requested and um, to, and uh, was received by Cedar City Police Department due to Michael's office location in Cedar City. Once determined Michael's home address was in Enix City, the missing persons report was passed to Enix City officers, at which point um, the welfare check to locate Tasha became an effort to find the entire family. Michael Haight was listed as an Allstate insurance agent with an office in Cedar City, but a family friend told Fox 13 News that the 40... We are learning more about what led up to the murder-suicide involving an Enoch family earlier this month. As Fox 13 News reported last night, the father, Michael Haight, was investigated for child abuse in 2020. Today, Fox 13 News investigative reporter Nate Carlisle compared what police found back then to warnings issued by domestic violence educators now. I think what's most frustrating is that I think if we think about Macy at this point as a victim of child abuse, she really did everything the system asks of her. And now, effectively, all she has to show for that is a marble slab over her body with her name on it. Salt Lake City Rabbi of Remy Zippel read how Macy Haight, the oldest daughter of Michael Haight and one of his murder victims, told Enoch police in 2020 that her father would shake her and once choked her. But sadly, history has repeated itself way too many times for us not to realize that people who end up shooting their families usually have these sorts of stories. Some of what's in the Enoch report matches warning signs published by the National Domestic Violence Hotline. It warns abusive behavior includes insulting, demeaning, or shaming you, especially in front of others, preventing you from making your own decisions, preventing or discouraging you from spending time with others, and showing jealousy of time with others. Zippel, who has become an advocate for child abuse victims across Utah, sees the hate, another domestic violence case with Utah ties. I want to be separated. Do you have anxiety? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no worries, please. You watch that moment where they come upon Gabby Petito and her boyfriend, and the amount of information they're trying to process is very, very good. That sort of sound. One of the best comments that I saw last night is, if that's what Macy said to the police about what her father was doing to her, how much did she not say? The more and more trauma-informed protocols that the law enforcement And I think that we can only monsters would do the sort of thing to their family, not someone who was an evil stuff, not someone who was a church going kind of guy. But it's time we understand that really good people can do really, really bad things, and it's on us as a public and as a society to prevent that. <laughs> documents obtained by the KSL investigators are offering the most detailed look yet at what might have been going on in that home before eight people were found dead. Tonight, Danielle Rivera reports on the oldest daughter's claims of violence by her father more than two years ago. 
We almost never know what's truly going on inside a home. But in 2020, one of the hate family's children told authorities about several instances of violent and controlling behavior by their dad, Michael Haight. Enoch Police Department documents reveal those claims came from eldest daughter, Macy Haight. In a police interview, she said there had been several times over the last few years that her father, Michael, had become assaultive. She said he once shook her and her head banged into a wooden surface. She was terrified he was going to hurt her. Another time, she said he grabbed her around the neck and choked her. She was very afraid that he was going to keep her from breathing and kill her. She also claimed she'd seen her father take away her mother's cell phone to keep her from leaving the house that Michael called her mother, Tasha, stupid and lazy. And when Macy defended her mom, it made him angrier. Whether other children in the home witnessed the same things is unclear. The only other interview listed in the report is a conversation police had with Michael Hayes. According to the documents, Michael said this had to be a misunderstanding and he never mistreated anyone in his family. But if he had indeed done these things, it was not meant to be an assault. And he told police, Macy is mouthy and he gets angry at her. The police officer told Michael he did not intend to charge him with any crime, but that his behavior was very close to assaultive and that he should continue seeing someone about his anger. The report states the Iron County Attorney's Office agreed criminal charges were not appropriate and police closed the case. Hmm. During a news conference after the murders, Enix City officials said they didn't want to look back. There will be questions that everybody asks themselves. What if I had done this? What if I had done that? Those aren't very good questions to ask. According to the report, mother, Tasha, had a question for police back in 2020. She wanted to know what to expect after they interviewed her husband and if the family would be safe. The officer told her there was no indication there would be any violent behavior on Michael's part. The KSL investigators have requested an interview with the Enoch Police Department to discuss how it handled the 2020 investigation. And Utah's Division of Child and Family Services was part of that investigation, too. The department's saying tonight they cannot provide any further details. Yeah. Hey, Paw Pounders, guests, and loved ones. Um, today I'm bringing you another tragic story about a, na a man named Mr. Hate who killed his entire family his mother-in-law, and then kills himself. It's such a tragic story. And so, as I always say, this is not my video. Everything that I have said, um, portrayed in this video, excuse me, guys, is all from news clips. And I will make sure that I give them them credit at the, at the bottom. And um, if you have any comments, please feel free to comment. And again, thank you for coming. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, I'm sorry I'm stumbling all over my words, family. I'm very tired. It's in the middle of the night. But anyway, please, I'm trying to get to a 1,000 subscribers. So please help me out and subscribe. Thank you. And less talk from me and more talk from the newspaper. New information tonight about Michael Haight. He's the man who murdered seven members of his family in Enoch earlier this month before taking his own life. Two years he murdered seven members of his family in Enoch earlier this month before taking his own life. Two years ago, police investigated him for child abuse. That's according to a police report obtained by Fox 13 investigative reporter Nate Carlisle. Nate, joining me now, who was Michael suspected of abusing? Kelly was his daughter, Macy. She told Enoch police her father on multiple occasions shook her and was verbally and emotionally abusive. These reports describe police calls to the hate home in the years before Michael Haight murdered his five children, his wife Tasha, and his mother-in-law, Gail Earl. In August 2020, Macy Haight, then 14 years old, told an Enid police officer and an investigator from the Division of Child and Family Services that her father grabbed her by the shoulders, once banged her head into wood along the back of the couch. The girl described another time when he got angry and grabbed her by the neck and choked her, though she clarified she never lost breath. Macy also said her father would say, to quote the report, how oh. stupid and lazy Tasha oh. was. In his interview with police, Michael Haight denied ever grabbing or shaking oh. Macy, but that oh. if he did do that, he didn't intend to assault her. He did admit to taking his wife's cell phone and iPad oh. and lying to her about it. He said he wanted to review her text messages to see if she had been saying bad things about his mother. 
The Enoch police officer wrote that he advised Michael his behavior was close to assault and that he should see someone about his anger. The report also says Tasha Haight asked what to expect when her husband came home and whether the family would be safe. I told her that there was no indication that there would be any violent behavior on Michael's part, the officer wrote. Tasha said she hoped it would be a wake-up call for her husband, but that she didn't think criminal charges were appropriate. The Iron County Attorney's Office, which would have been the prosecutor in the case, issued a statement Tuesday saying there was insufficient evidence to pursue charges. The report does indicate Enid police performed a lethality assessment. That's an evaluation to determine if there is significant likelihood of violence. It is so disturbing. Nate, were there any other instances of Enoch police visiting or going to see Michael Haight for any other reason? Yeah, I mean, there were a couple minor traffic offenses or he was let off with a warning. Uh, there was one report where uh, he suspects an insurance client of committing fraud, so he reports that person. Then there's one report from 2015. Uh, there's some juveniles in the road. They wouldn't get out of the way of Michael Haight's car, and it somehow turns into the staring contest between the kids and, and Haight yells at the kids and police show up and only the kids seem to have gotten in trouble. But yes, there was this weird encounter between Hayden and the kids. A glimpse into such a horrific situation. Thanks, Nate. Thank you. If you or someone you know is experiencing